Smelting items in a furnace is one of the most vital parts of Minecraft, but there's a ton of secrets, fuels, and farms that can make it even better and easier. So learn everything about smelting in this Minecraft guide. We obviously all know how to make a furnace, which is of course eight pieces of cobblestone. You can also switch out this cobblestone though for cobbled deep slate if you want, or you can also switch this out for even the nether's black stone. So it's a good thing to know that you can make furnaces if you need them really quickly in let's say the nether. But of course the furnace is the basic design, what about these upgraded forms? As you can see, the blast furnace does look fairly similar to the standard furnace. Here's how you craft one. Put three smooth stone blocks at the base of the crafting grid, then completely surround that furnace in five iron ingots. Honestly, kind of an expensive recipe, but here's why the blast furnace is so great. Any item you put in it can actually be cooked twice as quickly, but there are some reasons why you wouldn't just want every furnace to be a blast furnace, because this only works on ore type items. So basically, it can cook ores, raw metals, and tools and armor two times faster with the same fuel per item ratio. More or less, this will cook raw iron in five seconds instead of ten as you can see. But of course, it's one disadvantage is that you cannot cook things like sand or food. Overall though, it's really useful if you want to cook those types of items. Every single smelting block in Minecraft gives you the exact same amount of XP, so there's no reason why XP should be a factor when taking out items, and I will get into item XP, fuels, and things to smelt a little bit later. Let's move on to the next variant of the smelter, and that is the smelter variant that's used to cook food, the smoker. So we start with our furnace, once we have that, just surround that in those four logs in a pattern like this. These can be any logs. The smoker is identical to the blast furnace in every way, except for just the type of item that it's cooking, which means the smoker will cook any type of food item in five seconds instead of ten. And again, just just like the furnace, you do get the same amount of XP with this, it just makes things cook twice as quickly. However, there is one food item in the smoker that cannot be cooked through it, and that's the chorus fruit. And as you can tell, there's actually a lot of items that cannot be crafted in the smoker or the blast furnace, so you still have to cook those in the regular old slow furnace. There's one other type of smelting item in Minecraft though that is one of the most useful, and that is the campfire. There are two variants of the campfire, there is the soul fire campfire and there is the standard fire campfire. To make a campfire in Minecraft, you need to have three logs and three sticks. And they have to be designed in a pattern like this, with three logs on the bottom, two sticks on either side, and a stick on top there. Now we're making two different variants. The first one has a coal block in the center like this, and that will give you the standard fire campfire. The second variant is made the exact same way, except we put a piece of soul sand in the center. This cheaper recipe actually gives us the soul campfire which is great so either of these campfires will be just as good in terms of its cooking uses simply go up to it and right click with the food item in your hand and that will place the food item all across the surface of these logs now campfires can be put out with things like shovels or even water buckets if you want the amount of time it takes to cook an item on a campfire is 30 seconds because four items are cooking at once that means that per item, it's actually taking a lot less than 30 seconds, and is technically cooking these even quicker than in a furnace. Of course, to make the campfire cook again, we'll light it, and in 30 seconds, those items will pop off for us to pick up. Also, a great thing to do if you want to make this at least a little better, is to put a hopper beneath your campfire. So the items have to be manually placed on the fire, but when they pop off, all those items will be picked up. And just like the smoker, the campfire will only cook food-related items. Alright, now that we know how every single type of smelter in Minecraft works, what is every single item you can actually smelt in Minecraft? There are nine different food items that can be cooked in Minecraft. So you can cook raw beef, of course, raw pork chops, raw chicken, raw mutton, raw rabbits. A lot of times players will get a lot of raw salmon or raw cod from AFK fish farms. Players will cook large number of these as an emergency food. Now the only other two foods you can cook are potato and kelp. Potato is actually the only cooked non-meat food that can be easily grown. Finally, we have the kelp, but it turns into is dried kelp. The next thing you can do with the smelter in Minecraft is crack bricks. Now there are five different types of bricks that can be cracked in Minecraft. You can crack stone bricks in Minecraft, you can also crack the deep slate bricks, and even a variety of deep slate, the deep slate tiles. You can also do the polished black stone bricks, turning those into cracked polished black stone bricks, 
and we can even do the nether bricks, which is one of the least known, making cracked nether bricks. And if you want to go through your supply of bricks and maybe crack 10% of them, that could be a really great way of adding some cracked bricks as a detail into your build. As you can see throughout all these textures, all these bricks are really unique, really beautiful, and are a very vital tool for builders. Unless you started with silk touch, you're going to have a lot of cobblestone, as well as cobbled deep slate and even clay. All three of these items can be cooked directly into a more useful version in the furnace. Now with cobbled deep slate and cobblestone, we're going to be given the silk touched version of this block, so that would be stone. And with the deep slate, we can be given the much less useful deep slate version. However, the cobbled deep slate is the version of this that can actually be turned into things like the bricks. Finally, we have clay. Putting clay inside the furnace will cook it into a different item. We got terracotta from that. Let's move on to another thing you can do with furnaces, though, that has to do with stone, and that is smelting blocks to make them smooth variants. So this smoothing that the furnace can do is applicable to stone. You can also do it with sandstone as well as red sandstone. Smooth stone looks a little bit like standard stone, but is much lighter and has this beautiful border. Now we can make this smooth block by smelting standard stone. Now in terms of both the sandstones, what this more or less does, it takes the top texture of that block and it applies it to all sides so that it's a much much smoother and easier to see block. Basalt, which is found all around the basalt deltas, will turn into a smooth variety. Also, with the block of quartz, you would not think this item could be smoothed, but it absolutely can into the smooth quartz block. Let's take a look at both of these textures. Smooth basalt is pretty good. Then we have the smooth quartz block, which sort of like the smooth sandstone also gets rid of those borders. And so because of that, you can make a huge floor out of this, with the idea being that it's kind of difficult to see the difference between where one block starts and the other one ends. So that's how you can smooth items in a furnace. What else can you do? It's impossible to cook terracotta inside a furnace in Minecraft, but once that item's been dyed, and of course there are 16 dyed variants, those can absolutely be cooked in the furnace to glaze them. Now as you can see already, just from taking these out of the furnace, and when we place them down here, these are complex patterns on these blocks with a lot of texture. And that's probably the reason why it doesn't seem to fit into the game as much, but they're really awesome for adding different patterns and can actually be placed with different rotational directions to give you different looking patterns depending on how you arrange them. Some of these patterns too can be great for things like crystals, this one here being arrows, which is good for directions. We can see all 16 of those blocks placed around here, and that's what happens when you glaze terracotta in Minecraft, something you can only do through the furnace. The most vital use of the furnace is of course its ability to smelt raw oil ores, raw copper, raw gold, raw iron, and ancient debris. Now all four of these items will cook into their smelted variants, which are generally crafting items like the copper ingot, the gold ingot, as well as the iron ingot, and the netherite scrap, which can be eventually turned into the netherite ingot. Now the only thing in Minecraft that you can smelt, and I would never suggest doing it, is smelting silk-touched ore blocks. So for an example, smelting this lapis lazuli ore, or a coal ore, or even a nether quartz ore. What's going to happen at the end of this is we are going to get an output of one item from whatever that ore's output would be. So for an example, lapis lazuli blocks could give you normally up to 36 lapis lazuli depending on what you mine it with, whereas when you put it in the furnace you're only ever going to get one. However, one thing you can do is smelting sand or smelting red sand. This is probably the most smelted item in the entire game, and that's because sand gives you glass, one of the best building blocks in the game, diable in all 16 colors. And a little known fact is that red sand can also give you glass, although that glass is unfortunately not red. That would kind of be a fun easter egg. Speaking of easter eggs, one of the most unknown things you can do in a furnace is get water from it. So you want to start by cooking a wet sponge. Now once it's started cooking, remove the fuel from below it and replace that with an empty bucket before it cooks. Now watch what happens when this wet sponge is dried. The wet sponge is converted into that dried sponge, but also so our empty bucket is actually filled up with water. That's right, I would definitely call this one of the least known facts about Minecraft smelting. You can get charcoal instead of standard coal, which works the same, except for that you're not able to make coal blocks, and that is smelted from any log in the game, but that could not be a nether wood log. Now also, if you want green dye in Minecraft, both ways of getting that has to be through smelting. The first one is cooking cactus, and the second one is cooking sea pickles. And you might be 
be wondering what both of these items are that we get from this. Of course, the dye from a cactus is going to be green. The second type of green dye we can get is not standard green, it is lime dye, or sort of a light green variety, and that is gained directly from smelting sea pickles. If you like purper blocks and want to build with those, then you need to get your chorus fruit turned into popped chorus fruit. Now, chorus fruit, once it has been popped, is just a crafting ingredient for the purper blocks. You can also gain a little bit of iron or gold from a furnace from your garbage items if you want, sort of a recycling. So you can cook iron tools or armor, you can also cook the chain varieties of armor, and you can cook any gold variety, so for instance a golden sword here. Now what are these going to turn into? Just a nugget. So we have an iron nugget, we have a second iron nugget from the chain, and from the gold we have a gold nugget. One nugget is a ninth of an ingot, so this is not very much. And the final thing you can do with the smelter is make bricks. The first one comes from clay balls. This is the type of brick that everyone knows about being able to make in the furnace. And then of course four bricks turns into a brick block. Now the other type of brick you can make also requires four and that's the nether brick. The nether brick is smelted directly from nether rack. A lot of players will pick it up when mining out tunnels, but most people don't know that it can be cooked into all the nether bricks you want. Well that's literally every single thing that you can smelt in Minecraft. Another really important thing about smelting that you have to remember to do it efficiently is using the right fuel. This is every single item in Minecraft that can be used as a fuel. The ones over here are the least effective, needing four of them to cook one item, whereas the ones over here are the most effective, sometimes even having one item cook more than you can literally fit inside of a furnace. So let's start on this side. Lava can help you cook up to 100 items. In fact, the next type of fuel is a coal block, and that can smelt 80 items. And even 80 items is of course much more than a stack. So it's the same situation with both of these. Ideally, you want to make sure to have a hopper with that. Then we have the kelp block. This block is really easy to get and also cooks a lot of items. One kelp block will cook 20 items. It's not a full stack, which makes it a bit more useful than the coal block or the lava, which just smelts so many items at once. Now we have the blaze rod. The blaze rod will cook 12 items with it. I would not honestly suggest ever using this as a fuel source, as blaze rods are basically always going to have a better use for you than cooking with them. Now most players will cook their items with coal, and one coal will cook 8 items, or 1 eighth of a stack. Charcoal will also do the exact same thing. Next we have for only 6 items they smelt each, the boat, and then the much more expensive chest boat. That one boat which costs 5 planks to make can, if you put it in the furnace here, smelt 6 items. Now the next category is absolutely the largest, and that is 1.5 items each. This covers so many different items in the game that can be used as fuel, so let's just go through all of them. Literally any single log in Minecraft that can be smelted will give you one and a half items, but please convert those into planks first, because planks will do the exact same one and a half items each. Any item that is crafted out of wood directly will also smelt one and a half items, so for an example this fence here, or maybe a trap door or a fence gate. That also goes for the crafting table and any other work table in the entire game. The smithing table, along with all other crafting tables which contain any wood in the recipe, can also be used for fuel. Both types of bookshelves, as do daylight detectors and then the wooden tools of the fishing rod, crossbow, and bow. Chests and its variants, such as the standard chest and barrels, both smelt one and a half items. And also we have the banner do that, the ladder do that, mangrove roots do this, and this is a good fuel source to remember because mangrove roots are common. And for the final last two types of fuel that smelt one and a half items, we have the two musical blocks. Now the next category here, these blocks will only smelt one item, and the first one is actually a wooden pickaxe or any wooden tool. Also the sign can be used to burn one item, as can the hanging sign. As you can see right here, doors will also only smelt one item. If you're inside of Java Edition, a slab of any type will cook 0.75 of an item, or three quarters of an item. That means that it's half as efficient as any other wood crafted block. In Bedrock Edition, there's a trick here to double your fuel efficiency. So in Bedrock, slabs will actually smelt one and a half items, so in there, make sure that if you're trying to cook out of wood, that you convert all of your wood type items into slabs. Now for something that cooks half of an item each, we have the common wool block. Azalea bushes apparently can also be used as fuel, and this is one of the only green blocks that can be burnt when it's green. However, there's a few other plants in this list too of cooking half an item each, such as dead bushes or sticks, even also every single type of sapling. 
Also, sticks, which can be obtained in large numbers from things like bamboo, will smelt half of an item each. Finally, bowls will smelt half of an item each, and buttons. Now, carpets, you need three of them to cook one item. Finally, the worst source of fuel is bamboo and its output of scaffolding. And you need four bamboo or four scaffolding to cook an item. The reality is, is that bamboo is so easy to get in large numbers that it still makes a lot of sense to fill up your furnace with bamboo. Put a hopper leading into the back of the furnace, fill that up with bamboo, and then use that as a way to keep this bamboo being a good fuel source, and that is every single fuel source in Minecraft from the most efficient all the way down to the least. Now as well as furnaces, of course giving you whatever the outputted item is, it'll also give you XP based on what item you put into it. The thing is, different items in Minecraft will give you different amounts of XP upon completing smelting them, and that XP is actually stored in the furnace. There's two ways to get it out, the first one is removing the stack of items from the furnace, but the second one's a bit more interesting and that's actually breaking the furnace. Now this is a really great feature of Minecraft, which is that furnaces, blast furnaces, and smokers are XP banks inside of Minecraft, and as you can see when we did break that furnace there, XP came out of it. If you cook stone, cracked stone, smooth stone, if you glaze terracotta, if you cook glass, if you cook chorus fruit, if you cook sea pickles, or if you cook netherrack into nether bricks. In fact, also cooking chain items, gold items, and iron items, cooking logs into charcoal, and cooking kelp into dried kelp, all of those actions will give you 0.1 XP each. So let's say you did 10 of those actions, that would be 1 XP. Let's say you did one of those actions, how is the game going to give you 0.1 XP? However close that XP is to 1 is the percentage of you getting it. Cooking one piece of iron will give you 0.7 XP, and so because of that, when we take this out, there's going to be a 70% chance of getting that 1 XP. Now you actually get a little bit more XP than 0.1 if you are cooking charcoal or sponges, that's going to give you 0.15 XP. However, you can get 0.3 XP from cooking bricks, and you can get more than that, 0.35 XP from cooking any food items. You get about a third of an XP per food item. Now we're going to get almost a full XP from smelting iron like we did here, 0.7 XP each for raw iron or for raw copper. So with a stack of items here, we're going to get a ton of XP from taking this out of the furnace, because because it's going to have almost 40 XP saved up just from this. We're going to go from four and a half levels to just a touch over seven levels. Finally, in terms of some other items that give you a lot of XP from a furnace, raw gold and nether gold being smelted will give you a full guaranteed XP, and smelting ancient debris will literally give you two full XP per one you go through here. If you have a hopper beneath here, the XP is still stored in the furnace, and that's a really good thing to remember too. If you do have any auto smelters in your Minecraft, world, go through them right now, breaking every single furnace, and then just replacing it with a furnace again. When you break every single one of those furnaces, it's going to give you a ton of XP, because it's going to have all the XP saved up from every single item you have in that already. I hope you enjoyed that video about how to smelt in Minecraft. If you did, make sure to press the like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!